make them do their work? What can we do? Looks like I'm all into that one. Uh, no, no, it's, I um, Well, the fact that you're here, the fact that we have this uh, organized town hall, people have been expressing themselves in emails. Rob can attest to the fact that we get a lot of emails from people. This is all part of urging government to take action. And uh, I do that as well. And I, I think that being on the same side of an issue is helpful. We will get information about how gas companies are setting their prices. If, in fact, they, we discover that there is something inappropriate in the way that's done, then we will get action on that. I think that there's also a benefit of simply requiring companies to disclose uh, and in that in and of itself is going to be helpful. But by signing the petition, you can write letters, you can write a paragraph to me. I will pass on what I hear to the minister, to the cabinet. Uh, and, you know, this is something that is of, a, of concern to, to, uh, to many of us. And I think it's just important that we express that concern. And, and for me, I can just add that takes me 25 signatures uh, to stand up in the House of Commons and read out a petition. And I'm happy to do that repeatedly. So I encourage you to keep sending them to me because again, every time I do it, the minister's office has to respond. The more they hear it, the more it builds the, the concern that many Canadians are carrying about this issue. And it allows me to continue to get up and go talk to the minister again and again so that it's top of mind for him as well. Thank you. I apologize for one more question. Squeaking the wheel requires some media coverage. I noticed that there was a camera in here and outside and that you were interviewed. Perhaps we can have some kind of a, a CBC uh, speaker's panel and, and, and draw national attention to us instead of it just being a town hall for this community. Would that be a possibility? Um, so the cameras that were here were Global BC from Vancouver. They drove up on the uh, area this morning. And then this town hall is also being covered by the Vancouver Sun and the province. So there is certainly provincial interest in uh, our, our gas prices situation here. And if we can figure out how to fix this with our MLA and MP, man, there will be federal interest in this because this is an all across Canada issue. It's particularly right here, but every community wants to know about gas pricing. So I, I, mean, I would love it if, if this were the community that figured that out. Thank you. And we're on our way. Like, good for us. <laughs> Um, I was tasked with holding all the gas stations, and I was very cordial, and I invited everybody to this meeting today. Um, a couple who weren't there are coming back again and again. Um, one was station owner I never get a, did get a hold of, but otherwise I spoke personally to each of um, the individuals who said that they would be here. Um, did anybody show up? Do we know? Anybody here from a gas station in Columbia Fuels? All right, just for the record, they were all phoned, they were all invited, and they mostly said they were going to show up. Speaks for itself. And if they're not here, we'll come. <laughs> I, think we, I think we're jumping a couple of steps ahead, but uh, um, boy, that would be fun to talk about. Uh, or is the money just going to get lost in the government? No, I don't think that the government wasn't collecting the excess profits, right? So, I mean, we, we need to get the answers. I, I think it's a fair 
question. We need to get answers on you know, what we're here for. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Shauna Graham. I'm actually a business owner of Power as well. Um, <laughs> nervous as heck. <laughs> um, I just want to say thank you to all your hard work and for everybody being here. If you look around, there's not very many young people here. Um, I'm just curious, just out of curiosity, you know, like how many of, uh, of us are like under 50? Yeah. Where's the young people? I mean, they're a, a big part of our community as well that need to be interested in this. And my concern really comes down to, there's a lot of concern actually, but my biggest concern is we forget about the people. It's always about the, the bottom line, the dollar. We never forget, we forget about the care and concern about people. You know, it's always, we're always thinking about how to make that next dollar. And that's what the field companies are doing. Um, I just think government, has forgotten about the people. I'm just saying that as one. Um, the other thing I wanted to really know is, okay, so we find out all the information, how long is it gonna take for us to find out the answers? Like, we, are we gonna, you know, have to wait a month, two months, a year? Are we gonna forget? Like, are people gonna forget about us? Like, here we are doing this now, in a month, are we still going to be pushing, pushing this? I think the thing is, is that we have to keep pushing. You know, um, we got really compassionate over the last month, and people finally started to see a slight drop in Powell River, a slight. But the thing is, is that um, my concern is we're going to forget. You know, we kind of just kind of come to that place of acceptance oh well you know it's power river this is what we do and we somehow dig in our pockets a little bit deeper so that we can pay the extra gas costs or the extra whatever that we have to pay and i can tell you as a business owner i'm struggling financially struggling and i've noticed that i've been in a business now for 10 years and my business has declined immensely especially in the last three and I know and I pay I'm I deliver I deliver flowers so I rely on gas and I pay a lot of money towards that so I think we have to just kind of remember that um, to be compassionate but to also be passionate about this point um, like we can't give up anyway thanks your question for a moment in a bit of a bizarre way. Um, your point about young people, why are young people not here? I'm going to make a guess. Gas prices is a bit of a tough sell as a uh, social issue at a time when people are more and more, of course, concerned about using less fuel for environmental reasons. Um, and uh, it's Part of the reason why I like this as a story so much, it is, it is really complex. There's the municipal problem that Powell River was built for the automobile. We have communities within the municipality that are quite spread out and are not served by civic services in every neighborhood. We don't have a library in every neighborhood. We don't have a recreation center in every neighborhood. We don't have a grocery store that people can walk to in every neighborhood and we don't have a bus system that will take you around so that you can conduct your lives in a non-driving capacity. Um, so it's part of the reason why I wanted to drill down and find out actually how much is gas costing people per month. $100 a month per household is the best I can come up with. And, and challenge the narrative that if you're asking for lower prices that you're you're promoting fuel. You're not. You're looking at a difficult situation that we're having at this time, at a time when we really don't have alternatives. 
um, and choosing to not put the burden of, uh, of not fighting for this onto the shoulders of people who really can't afford to pay for it. Hi, my name is Dino Charnello. Um, young people aren't here because they're not interested in politics and they don't know what inexpensive gas is. I worked at a gas station when I was a young fellow, it was 27 cents a gallon. They don't know that. It's always been high for them. But my question is, I have family in Vancouver and I have family in Victoria. So in Vancouver, I've learned to gas up after 6 o'clock. Price drops by 6 cents a litre every night. When I go to Victoria, the cheapest gas on the island is Duncan. Always Duncan, coming and going. So I suggest to you, Mr. Simon, when you're going to Victoria, find out why Duncan has the cheapest gas on the island. we like to know. Always is. My other question... I don't want to take away from this forum from the gas part, but the other mistake that I see happening from your government right now is you're encouraging people to vote electric vehicles, which is terrific. But instead of giving them their $5,000 or $6,000 of grants to put a unit in their house, you're putting power stations out in front of the complex, in front of the boat harbor, premium parking, and they're getting hydro for free. If we all went to electric cars tomorrow, we'd have a problem. You've got to, you're going to give them the $5,000, put a unit in their house. You've got to stop this free stuff on the outside. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ian McDonald, and I, I had uh, a statement and a possible question. So the one, the one statement is kudos to the hundred people that showed up, and if any cameras are looking or any of our representatives representatives are looking, then they might figure it's a hundred people. Hopefully there's some data that can say these 100 people equals 1,500. I, I don't know why people can't be bothered. Maybe they're walking their dog or whatever they're doing. So hopefully this 100 people reflection will, will shine to 1,500 because most everyone is concerned about it. But there's a combination of, well, it's cheaper in Powell River. I just moved from the city. That's just the cost of living. Um, so this, these hundred people here, hopefully, there's a there's a reflection of, of more more people worried than that. I was just gonna say, um, I think that we let the the gas station owners off the hook. Um, anybody that's grew up in a city, we all pumped gas when we when we were younger. It, it was very common for somebody to let the gas station owner know that so-and-so raised it three cents a liter or whatever. It's been the norm almost everywhere. Uh, if, if they're getting 149 at another station, you're not gonna leave yours down at, at 144. So there's always seemed to have been the collusion with the gas station owners. And although we didn't want to get harsh, and it would be amazing if one of the owners showed up, I think that we should put a little bit of the systemic problem on the backs of the gas station owners also. Thank you for your comment, and I, and I, I was just wanted to say, you know, I don't always assess the urgency of an issue by the number of people who show up. This is a fundamental issue of fairness. So even if six people showed up, it's still an issue of fairness. This power over, I think, the people here represent their families, their friends. I think the whole community is concerned about this issue. I just wanted to comment on the issue of the youth and where they are, where they are today. I have five kids, four grandkids, so lots of youth in my family. Um, my teenager can't afford to drive from Lund to here. Well, she's not a teenager anymore. She's in her twenties, actually. To on, on a day off of work to attend a meeting. She tends to participate online, as do many of our youth. They feel it's less expensive and more efficient for them to do that. 
So if we want to see our youth, we may have to figure out some technology to bring her to where we're at. And I think that you would find that there are many youth in this community that are concerned about these issues. Not only is gas expensive for them, but insurance is way more expensive for them than any of us. The uh, young parents out there, they, they don't, they, this is Sunday, they, they can't uh, uh, work all week and then get away from their kids on a Sunday too. That doesn't work. Um, so before you decide their presence here or there um, is an indicator of their interest or how they're affected, I think that uh, maybe walk a mile in their shoes and find out how very difficult it is for youth to drive a car in, in today's world. And that has to do with a lot of things. My daughter just went to renew her insurance um, the other day and it's, it's way up there. She's never had an accident, ever. Um, but apparently because she's 22, that means she has to pay more for insurance. Um, I just wanted to speak to that. I can give you an example of that. When I go to town, um, I'd like to say that it was once, maybe twice a week, um, and that, that was my lifestyle. It's not. I'm self-employed, so I'm in town anywhere from five to six days a week. Sunday's not a day of rest for me, it's catching up. And while I'm not youth, it still is a hardship to have to go that many times into town. So when I do go into town, I don't waste my time on just going in once and then back home and then back into town again. I'm usually in town for anywhere from six to 12 hours, depending on my schedule. And it's a multitasking day. I can't afford to ride a motorcycle because I, I have 20 different outfits or stuff that I have to carry all the time, back and forth. So that's, and I, I consider myself normal and mainstream in that way. Many people, we have a list. I am a lady of perpetual lists. I love writing lists. It helps keep me organized. And I need that because when I go to town, I have at least three to six different things that I'm doing in my day. And Thank that's you. how I can economize on the trips to town. Amen. Thank you. So my name is Sherry Burton, and um, the, it's a trickle down effect for all of us in this economy. The tradespeople, the contractors, businesses are paying more for fuel. So it trickled down to all of us. We all get impacted by that. It's not just how much more individual we have to pay in money for gas. It's in every, it permeates every facet of our lives here in Powell River. It also affects our property taxes. The city has to pay more to fuel all their vehicles and stuff. And who pays for that? Taxpayers. So it directly impacts every aspect of your life, whether you own a car or not. You're paying more for food. You're paying more, like, it, it completely impacts you entirely. So, everybody needs to understand that. I had brought this up on a uh, Facebook page a year ago. I had so many people slam me for, well, then ride a bike, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, geez, you know, you need to go on a car. This is affecting you every single day. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Ed, and I'd like 
to kind of address the fines that are being done, the kind of minimalist fines for, uh, we can't say collusion, but price fixing maybe. Um, where do those bad fines go? What black hole in government do they disappear down? And uh, we're hoping to raise those fines. And are those fines specific to a company that's operating in a certain area? Can those fines be directed back to that community? Uh, <coughs> A lot of a lot of tricky things. We're hoping to raise those fines up, right? So maybe they could come back to the communities that have been found to have price fixing happening there. Um, I don't know. Probably impossible questions, but there you go. I don't mind. I don't mind impossible questions. So thank you for that. Um, I can look into that, and I can get back to you. And if you want me to get back to you specifically, make sure that Drewin has your contact information and we'll do that. Hi there, um, my name's Andrew Bryan, I'm self-employed. Um, thank you, Diva, thank you, Nicholas, thank you, Rachel, thank you, Colin. Uh, wonderful opportunity. Raises some interesting questions for me. Uh, everything I do depends on fuel. Um, my vehicle is my toolbox, so whether I have to fix your light bulb or unplug your toilet, um, I, it, I spend a lot of in fuel, uh, constantly on the road. Um, I'm surprised that we can't, in this room, answer the question of how fuel arrives on Vancouver Island. Um, I would wager that it's not a pipeline under the ocean. Uh, I would strongly imagine that it's, that it's shipped uh, in some kind of a boat. So that means the difference in price differential between what gas costs at the terminal on Vancouver Island and what it costs here in Powell River is a direct reflection of that shipping cost. Um, so that's where I would start looking uh, for any kind of discrepancy. It's, it's, there's not a pipeline across the Strait of Georgia that supplies the fuel. Um, the second issue that I would like to address um, I really like the comment that was raised about young people engaging in the political process and engaging in, in events such as this. It's really hard to get people motivated. I agree with the comment that young people engage often online and making it easy for them to do that is something that we should all strive towards. Um, finally, I'm mad as hell. I'm not going to take it on you anymore. Uh, and I'm glad you feel the same way. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. It's a, it's a great point that we don't in this room know how gas gets from Vancouver to Vancouver Island. And in the process of writing the first story for Fall River Living, I found myself being angry with myself over and over again as I faced really obvious questions that I didn't know the answer to. How many gas stations are in town? Who owns them? Who owns Chevron? Who, um, how does gas get to BC? Do we have any refineries here? Like, totally basic things that we should all know because we all live here and buy gas. I found myself not knowing, and actually many of the answers to those questions were difficult to get. So. Certainly, in my own process of encountering the gas prices story, um, being gobsmacked <laughs> and not knowing was a really frequent, recurring part of my reporting process. Uh, one thing that I do know is that the rack rate of gas in Vancouver is about two cents less than the rack rate of gas in Nanaimo, consistently. Is that the cost of margin? Probably. Um, so it's two cents from Vancouver to Nanaimo by whatever service they use. Uh, they being the rack rate in my head is Petro Canada. Um, and it's 3.5 cents according to city transfer to barge it from Richmond to Powell River. <laughs> right? This is, <laughs> yeah, this is like, this is what I did for the whole writing process.
On the prices coming in, I know a couple of people down in Vancouver who actually manage gas stations. And one of the ladies here I know as well who works behind the scenes in the gas station. They get a phone call from, I believe it was Calgary, it is Alberta, uh, they, uh, from different companies, but they're, uh, I don't know what do you call them, they're a company for the chain stores. And they call in and they tell them and they give them a certain amount of time to change their price. And I've been told by each person I know who does the managing in the gas stations that the owners have nothing to do with the price. They cannot um, take a call from Shell, say, and be told, okay, make it $1.49 in 15 minutes and then add another five cents on it for the heck of it. They have to follow what they're told by this parent company out of the chains. So that's the three chains here, uh, Petrocan, Chevron, and Shell. And that's from people behind the scenes in the companies. And as far as the pipeline goes, I'm sure people have charts here saying a lot of people have boats. If you take a look on your charts, you'll see for the natural gas line, they have it on the charts and no anchoring. They're going to have that there on there too. So if there's a gas line, there's going to be no anchoring. So it'll be easy to find out if there is a gas line there. I, I personally haven't looked for it, but it'll be easy. Thank you. So it's 323. Do we have a couple of last speakers? There's a pipeline from Washington State to Victoria, and that's how our gas comes in on the bank of Rhode It was put in years and years ago, and they still monitor it. Oh. I wonder if you could do that now. What's that? I wonder if you could do that now. Yes, I can. We do it. We used to have four refineries in BC. We're down to one now. Camera, well, Husky and Prince George. Everybody just packs up and leaves Alberta because it's free trade between the provinces. But Alberta doesn't think that now. Right? Support top of the hill. How come they're 140? Yeah. They dropped the price. They were 159 in town and they were 145. So what does that say? So thank you all so much for coming and for uh, your questions and your ideas and your statements. And now it's over to Nick and Rachel to uh, to shake it up. Yeah, well, I want to thank you again. Thank everybody for coming. I'm, this has been useful for me because this is what I bring to the government. We want action. We want something to happen. We've already, I think, I think Pierre, I call it the Fuel Transparency Act, but it's really the Pierre Woolley Fuel Transparency Act. <laughs> so very strong advocate. The community has been strong advocates. We're making some progress, and I think everybody in the room wants us to make more. So thanks for being part of that. Thanks for being here. And I also just express my thanks. I've got a few great ideas that I'm happy to bring back to Ottawa, and I will be reporting back in the mail outs that I sent. So feel free to stop by or call our office anytime. Thank you so much for coming out on this Sunday. I think you have to admit that this is legislation which has never been dealt with before. So this is very progressive. I don't know where it will lead eventually, but um, I think it's a really good start. And just to make your day, <laughs> downtown Vancouver, 131.9 a liter, which includes the transit tax. Maybe we're paying for the transit tax. Pearl River is paying 147.9 with no transit tax. So take your blood pressure pills, <laughs> go home, scream, and then start writing letters to the BC Utilities Commission, the Honorable Bruce Ralston, the MLA, and telling them this is good, get on with it, and let's see what we can get out of this and find out who the troublemakers are as far as our pockets are concerned. <laughs>